Hey guys and gals, this is a long plane review for Surprise Surprise on the Amstrad CPC, released by Central Solutions in 1986. Now, Surprise Surprise, which is sadly not a tie-in licensed game of a crap Cilla Black TV show, is regarded as one of, if not the worst ever Amstrad CPC game ever made easily appearing in most people's top five lists of crap CPC games every time. It did, though, go unheard of for years. Released on budget by a tiny company that disappeared shortly after its release, it's doubtful this made it into many stores back in the day, and I've personally never seen a copy appear on eBay either. Not that you would want to own one, anyway. It was likely it came to prominence when lists of Amstrad Action magazine review scores were being compiled for the CPC Wiki website, and it was found that AA rated the game 10%, one of the lowest scores ever given. Indeed, when you come across a game rated so low, especially in the early days of the Amstrad, when we had to make do with crap from Amsoft and other rubbish companies, well, you get intrigued. And it's like slowing down in your car to look at an accident that happened at the side of the road. You just can't help but slow down and look. And well, so did Ashens in his terrible old games you've probably never heard of book that dedicated six whole pages to surprise surprise. Indeed, it was Ashens himself on a Twitch stream I was doing that popped up in the chat and requested I play the darn thing. And that has now led me on this journey here with you today, dear viewer. And you can thank him for that. So, thank you, Ashens. Thank you. So then, as we started to play it on Twitch, we got intrigued. What exactly is this game about? Is it really this bug-ridden and unfinished? Is it even completable? What other horrors lurk in later rooms? And we actually ended up doing a whole other stream playing through and mapping this bloody thing for hours. Because as we discovered, there's perhaps a little more to this game than we first thought. And many were put off by the first few rooms and the game glitching. This is because the game only works on CPC 464s and many of us trying it for the first time are often using emulators set in 6128 mode. So we end up playing an extremely broken version of an already broken game. There's also issues with the controls that we had to overcome. So for those of you using the WinApe emulator, make sure you turn off the joystick and unmap joystick directions that are mapped to cursor keys by default. So just getting this game to a workable state in an emulator required more effort than this game deserves. And with the only available dump of this game available, we're not actually sure if the horrendous bugs in this game are the fault of the dump or present in the real physical cassette, given we know absolutely no one who owns this bloody thing. I suspect it is present though. Anyway, so after a couple of Twitch streams and a bit more working out offline, well, you know, I'm not sure my Twitch viewers could take much more punishment, I now present to you a fully completed map of the game, which you can view and download from the CPC Power website. Please do not ask me why I've wasted precious time out of my life on this. You're asking the same man who completed Roland in time and didn't get committed to a mental institution. Mm. So we'll look at this map in more detail shortly, but let's find out what we're supposed to do in the game from the manual. So apparently we've been invited to a banquet at some kind of mansion by the mysterious Long John. Make note of the section that says the banquet door is locked and can only be opened by pressing four buttons, which are each in rooms with a letter of the secret code. And that's it. No mention of knights of lightning shooting out their fingers though. So let's look at our map before we start the game. The banquet room and the locked door is right at the very top and far north of the mansion. The door is represented by a giant orange rectangle. Pay attention just down from this room to what I call the death rooms. These result in instant death if you walk into them. And by the way, you only have one life in the game. Die and it's game over, start all over again. 
The way you know they are a deaf room is by the walls of the previous room on that side of the entrance being red. Now let's go all the way down and southwest to what I like to think are the dungeons of this bizarre mansion. Something strange is afoot here. If I'm being kind, I'd say, well, there's a few bugs here, but more likely it's a combination of bugs and the game being unfinished. Do not ever dare to go anywhere near here. There are several rooms alongside more death rooms that will soft lock and kill you. So avoid. There's nothing you need to do down here anyway. So onto the four buttons. The first one is right near the entrance and you can see the letter W there. I will reveal a spoiler here. The secret code is WILF, W-I-L-F. And it's these letters that indicate which order you should find these orange button rooms. Go in one in the wrong order and nothing happens. The second one, I, is over to the east. Next, you're more likely to come across the fourth one first and wonder why you can't find and press a button. But the third one, you want is down here to the far southeast with the letter L. Then finally go west to the fourth one and the letter F, spelling the name and the word Wilf. Now at last you can go all the way north to the banquet hall and the giant orange block has disappeared. Now we can enjoy this delicious banquet and I hope it was all worth it. But anyway, so let's at last get into this game and see if it really is the worst Amstrad game of all time. So off we go with a cracked version of the game, which is the only dump available on the internet to download and play in an emulator. And oh, what in God's name? Um, it looks like someone having a seizure whilst playing with an Etch-a-Sketch. Uh, words fail me. Indeed, uh, talking to seizures, epilepsy warning here. Damn, I probably should have said that before. That amazing intro sequence started up there. I, I, why does that exist? What is it trying to do there? Uh, I don't know. But if you thought the amazing cinematic intro sequence was over, ladies and gentlemen, well... We have part two of the intro here. Are you ready? Then let's press enter. <laughs> oh, it still makes me laugh seeing this. Um, two frames of animation just on his feet and legs there. <laughs> and into the house or mansion or castle we go. And right, so <laughs> we're off to find the four buttons um, to open the banquet hall door and as you can see it's a single screen um, adventure game I guess you could call it oh look there's there's fishies in a fish tank um, with what looks like some uh, graphical corruption at the bottom of the fish tank now again I don't know if this is something uh, caused by a bad crack of the game or this is in the real game or not I don't know but anyway we have reached the first um, button and room with a button in and you can see there's letters W either side of the room there this is the first letter of the code that we're gonna, that's going to spell out the word Wilf and yay we've pressed the first button so yes there's four buttons four and with four letters and as I said, as I said earlier, um, we have to spell out the secret word, which is Wilf, W-I-L-F. So you have to hit these um, buttons in the right order. Um, so we're after the button with I now, which is uh, quite uh, coincidentally quite fa still fairly fairly close to the starting point. Uh, it's over to the east. Of where we are so um, if you, you may want to follow along with the map I made there'll be a link in the description to uh, view and download the map that might make it more of an interesting thing to watch I don't know anyway so we're, we're in a room avoiding kidder lemons um, it appears that um, all the enemies in the game are um, killer fruit or vegetables perhaps to tie in with the banquet theme um, 
don't ask me why or whatever. Um, apart from this room here, looks like they're, they may be killer radios, like old fashioned radios. Do you remember them? Uh, in the middle of the room is the worst Ikea lamp ever. And by, and by the way guys, everything kills you apart from the walls. So that touching that lamp will kill you. Oh! I'm not sure what that room was there. Um, we've got killer tomatoes falling on our heads here. And we've got a new thing to navigate here. Uh, a moving barrier. Again, touching that will kill you. Um, but yes, apart from the walls, touching anything else, any other object or sprite uh, will, will result in instant death and an instant game over. There are no lives in this game. It's a one life game and uh, yeah, if you die, you start all over again at the beginning. And another fish tank room here. I mean, my God. Um... <laughs> the animation there and the sprite of his feet going. Um, utterly incompetent <laughs> incompetent and uh, embarrassing. Uh, we've now got three killer tomatoes. And this, this guy moves by dislocating his ankles and flipping his feet around there. Wow. And he does a slow shuffle left to right. Um... And he's, he's got a number one on his shirt there. Oh, I don't know what those objects are. What, what, do, you, what do you reckon those are, ladies and gentlemen? Killer washing machines? Killer tumble dryers? And because there's no sprites in this room, he moves about the room a lot quicker. So yes, your speed in the rooms vary depending on what's going on in them. Um, oh yes. Um, th these VTR rooms pop up quite a bit. They serve no purpose at all. Uh, just avoid the green arrows, um, but just for a clever programming trick, perhaps the coder thought there. VTR stands for Video Tape Recorder, so it's like a live, it's a live webcam basically, almost. And here we are in the second room, and you can see there the letter I there either side, and hit the button. Congratulations, you are now 50% halfway through the game. All right, and we're off to find button three, which is the letter L, and that is in the far southeast of the map, but you, you sort of got to loop around in a C shape. So we're gonna to need to go a little bit north here, then we're gonna go move as far west as we can, then we go as far south as we can, but not too far south because you'll hit the dreaded dungeons, as I call them, uh, that I described earlier in the video, which which the rooms are completely bugged and broken and will soft lock the game and you have to basically uh, uh, quit, quit, restart the computer and load the game up again. So um, again, they were probably unfinished yeah, struggling to get through the door there. So one of the problems is getting through the doorways. You have to be absolutely pixel perfect to get through them. Um, let's describe. So it varies which position, how far up or down you have to be for either the left hand side door or the right hand side door. So to go through a door on the left hand side, you sort of have to be a pixel or two higher than you think you need to be almost like your head would clonk against the edge whereas on the doors the doorways on the right you need to be a little bit lower than you expect so it's wonderfully consistent this game <laughs> um, it's certainly consistent in its crapness and look he's got a hair on the back of his head but you don't see any hair um, at any other angle viewing angle on the sprite so that's interesting so we need to mention though uh, that this was uh, a budget release at the price of £1.99 in uh, 1986. So this is not a full price or a mid price release game. It was a very, very cheapy budget release for £1.99. Um, yeah, and we can confirm that because um, it was reviewed in Amsterdam Action Magazine and they talked about it there and you can see the price listed in the review. More on Amsterdam Action's review in a little bit. 
Um, but yes, Massatronic though at the time had started achieving great success in creating the budget market, so lots of other companies decided to have a go themselves. Central Solutions was another such company to spring up around the time alongside Codemasters, etc. But there is very little at all I can find about Central Solutions on the internet. L literally nothing at all, apart from a few of those game-based sites listing their games, like Moby Games, etc. But no other details about them, really. Um, I mean, we only know of their name here from it being on the cassette sticker. Their name isn't even on the box art anywhere or manual, which is a bit odd. Um, but they did release two other games on the Amstrad. There was a simple shoot 'em up called Barchu. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And a text adventure game called Mansion, which I've not tried, but uh, I assume it's pretty boring and crap. They also released a small number of games on the uh, Speccy and C64, with a total of about seven games released across all systems between 1984 and 1986 before they just disappeared into thin air. But um, Artistry Recordings London is also mentioned in the manual. Uh, probably as the duplicator and distributor of the cassettes and box art and stuff. Maybe the, maybe they were the same company, I don't know. But again, I was not able to find much about them either. I found some mention of them up to about 2014 with a chap called Colin R. Richardson running it. With his LinkedIn still saying he's a managing director. But there's no uh, current online presence for them, so they probably sadly disappeared uh, about five or so years ago. As for the coder, um, well, it's a guy called John King, which we can find from the manual. Um, but there's no other Amstrad games listed for him online anywhere. I did do a deep dive trying to find anything about Mr. King. Unfortunately, with such a common name, my searches have not been fruitful. There is, however, one John King and Amstrad connection. And I do wonder if it's the same John King who used to run the PCW King website. Now, for some of you, that may bring back some old memories of the earliest... Amstrad websites appearing in the late 90s, early 2000s on the uh, good old World Wide Web, as we used to call it. For some of us, it was our first website where you could read upon tutorials on how to service a disk drive, buy spare parts, and other useful things related to both the Amstrad, CPC, and PCW computers. Sadly, the uh, site went offline over 10 years ago now, but the Internet Archive Wayback Machine has a cached copy of the website. But unfortunately, it has no mention of Surprise Surprise or John coding any games which to be honest would be no surprise here either I mean who would want to own up to making this pile of crap so anyway it may just be a coincidence that connection as I said before John King is a fairly common name there we go uh, so yeah we're moving now um, around the bottom of the mansion going east to the third button avoiding the Falling Killer Tomatoes. Don't even bother trying to get out the top door there on those rooms of the Falling Tomatoes because it doesn't matter how far up you are in the room, the tomato always spawns directly above the player, so it's, you're going to have instant death there. Um, so basically, go the route I'm going in this long play. I have literally drawn out and mapped out the uh, quickest route and safest route possible to get through the game as quickly as possible. Uh, by drawing some lines on the map I uh, made, as you saw earlier, and you can download for yourself. Uh, I'm not sure what those items are. Killer car batteries? I, I Killer sofas? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And another one of those VTR rooms. Uh, I bet the coder was very proud of himself for that little special effect he's got going there. <laughs> Bless. Um. Yeah, okay. So... Uh, this was reviewed, oh hang on, hang on, we've just reached uh, room 3 here, and as you can see that's the letter L. Um, I mentioned earlier that you might come across the 4th room with the letter F in before you come to this room, going the way you uh, have to go. 
And if you go in that room, the fourth room with the letter F, um, the button room, sorry, um, nothing will happen when you reach the bottom. And for many of us, when we were trying this out, uh, I think Main Hayes was working on this alongside me to try and figure out the game. We both got to that room and figured the game was bogged and it was impossible to complete. Well, no, you just had to do it in the right order. So now we can go to the um, letter F room which is back where we came from for the fourth and final button. Uh, there's apparently about 100 rooms in total. Uh, yeah, that's about right. I think it's just over 100 rooms. It's a fair amount of them, but obviously a lot of them are kind of repeated, just with different colours on the walls and uh, different exits. Um, some of the rooms, if you look at my map, um, don't logically follow each other very well, especially around this area. Some some rooms warp several like room blocks across from each other. There's only about uh, I'd say one, two, three, four rooms that don't sort of logically um, slot alongside each other, and there's a weird warp around this area anyway, um, which doesn't logically make sense. Which might tie in more with the theory that the game was unfinished and buggy especially around this area of the map but um, hey there you go so yeah I was just about to talk about the Amstrad Action review um, so this was reviewed in the April 1986 issue 7 of Amstrad Action magazine on page 67 and they reviewed both games from Central, Central Solutions on the same page. Uh, first up was Barchu, uh, which scored an almost as bad 21%. And then, of course, surprise, surprise. I have played Barchu, or Bachu as it's called in game. So they even mucks that up. Um, and that is also basically a load of old rubbish as well. Uh, a little bit more fun because it's a simple shoot 'em up. Oh, here we are actually in the fourth button room, the letter F. So if we've spelt out the letters W-I-L-F, Wilf. And yes, why does he have a number one on the front of his uh, white jumper there? I don't know. And that is all four buttons pressed. And now we can go to the very sort of top north of the uh, mansion and house or castle. And we can get to the banquet room and uh, complete the game. Yeah, so we'll talk about the Amsterdam Action review. Um, so um, Amsterdam Action also makes mention that Central Solutions are another budget company starting up to cash in on the success forged by Mastertronic and their budget games. And I will directly quote from the review here. Mastertronic's success seems to be drawing a lot of other people to produce budget software on the Amstrad. Unfortunately, this particular product is the sort that brings the profits of computer doom out of the chip work, predicting market slumps. Ouch. Yes, with the uh, final sting being the final words of the review. And I quote again, It wouldn't load on our 6128. The moral? Buy a 6128. Double ouch. Yes, so there you go. For their ratings, they gave the graphics a whopping 12%. The Sonics, 12% again. And the Grab Factor, an 8%. With Stain Power, 9%. And then lastly, an overall Amstrad Action AA rating of 10%. So there you go. One of the lowest rated games ever in Amstrad Action's uh, history. Mm. Um, anyway, so I, I'd say on to my review. And uh, let us first answer the question of, is this the worst Amstrad game of all time? The answer, after playing it through to the end and some deliberation, is no. Um, I think there's actually worse games on the Amstrad. Um, at best, I would describe this as on a level and a par with the lesser games that appear from the university students entering their games in the yearly CPC Retro Dev competition. And that's no disrespect to them either. I mean, those students only have a few weeks to do their games. And before that, they wouldn't have ever touched an Amstrad before in their lives. But yeah, it feels like one of those games, incredibly basic, single screen affair, generally a bit broken and incredibly unfinished and unpolished. 
but comparing it to other awful games on the Amstrad. For example, uh, in my opinion, it has more depth than something like LA SWAT, for example. Uh, and honestly, I think the honour of the worst game on the Amstrad of all time, I think it has to be something like Count Duckler 2, which has no excuse whatsoever. That was a big license from a respected budget house, released as late as 1992. There is absolutely no excuse there at all. At least here, you can say, well, it was 1985 to six, and it was £1.99, it was a a new company starting up probably um, got a game in from some 15 year old coder and it was their first ever game um, and I, I don't know I don't know perhaps they rushed him and said just get, get, get us the game and he was in the middle of his GCSE exams or something like that I don't know really that's no it's still really no excuse I suppose but um, um, I did find myself drawn to this once I get past its awful quirks and I, I, I genuinely got interested in seeing what else is in this game and I suppose there is a little bit of depth here like figuring out where the buttons are, what order to push them in, where's the banquet hall, what are we going to see in the, at the banquet? Hmm. Uh, I mean I, I, I'm pushing it a bit there, I really am stretching it quite thin. <laughs> Um, this is terrible. I mean, look at this. The the uh, the killer static tomato. I mean, there's two rooms of it. Actually, I think there's one, two, three, four, five rooms where there's just a static tomato in the middle of the screen. That is uh, that um, you just have to walk around. I mean, mm. I mean, I haven't even mentioned the um, well. Music and I use the word music in the loosest possible terms and sense um, Utterly dreadful and irritating um, But at least it has something going on there um, is, it, is it better than dead silence? No, oh, at least at least they tried um, <laughs> It's just utterly bizarre um, The graphics I mean what can you say about the graphics? Um, just incredibly basic it's 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 like a coder's first attempt at animating a sprite i mean why on earth did you think that dis dislocating the ankles and the feet there would be a good way of showing the sprite is moving upwards <laughs> i mean it's even looks even worse there when the when the uh, game goes super fast uh, but i believe we are nearing the end of the game and I'm going to give this game a score of 1 out of 10. It is one of the worst ever games on the Amstrad. Certainly in the top 5. More than likely in the top 3 worst Amstrad games. Oh look, the little special effect here. It's a, it's a room that's completely dark and completely pointless. So the coder was kind of trying here. I mean, I don't know. It's still a one, one out of ten game, and it's kind of intriguing just for how bad it is. It didn't fill me of rage, unlike, say, like Count Duckula Two, which is just appalling and inexcusable. Um, so yeah, perhaps I'm a little kinder on it than I should be. But here we are at the final, well, the penultimate room, and here is the final room, ladies and gentlemen, the banquet room. Hey, there we go. And we have completed Surprise Surprise with a score of 5 out of 5. But unfortunately, that wonderful ending sequence went by far too quickly. So I'm going to do an edit here and bring it back in, but extend it out for us so we can bask in the glory that is this wonderful ending as we arrive in a, well, it looks like a <laughs> flooded room with a sea and some boats there. Actually, no, that is the banquet table, of course, with some delicious dishes of food waiting for us. There's two uh, gentlemen waiting there. One of them in red has a much fatter and bigger head with a giant nose. And we've got some wavy lines at the top of the screen there. And, of course, surprise, surprise! I'm not sure quite what the surprise was. Uh, there's no Scylla Black waiting for us, definitely, thank God. But there you go, guys. That was 
surprise, surprise, with a score of 1 out of 10 from me, the lowest game I've ever rated on my channel. But we shall look at some more stinkers, I'm sure, soon enough, and perhaps look at the very worst amateur games in a top 10 type video at some point. Um, certainly, I think surprise, surprise will be in the top three. But as I said earlier, I don't think this is the worst Amstrad game ever. Uh, I think that honour will probably go to Count Duckula 2. Spoiler alert. Oh well. So there you go. Thank you for watching, guys. And the mystery of Surprise Surprise, well, for the most part, has been revealed and finally put to rest and completed. So there you go. I'm doing my service and duty for all you Amstrad lovers out there. <sighs> Uh, I hope I don't have to do something like this again, but I will. You know me. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you all again very soon. Goodbye. Surprise, surprise. We've come to the end of Surprise, Surprise. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click a like below, leave a comment, and also subscribe if you haven't already. And over that way, there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.